Yesterday, state economists with Legislative Council staff released their latest economic forecast for the state of Colorado, and it brings great news for Colorado taxpayers. Now, this 100-page report has a lot to unpack, so what I'm going to do in this, in this video is I'm going to narrow in on the Taxpayers' Bill of Rights, or TABOR, and show how this forecast lets us know how TABOR is continuing to deliver for Coloradans. Now, you probably remember those $750 checks that we got in the mail last summer. That was thanks to TABOR. In the Colorado State Constitution, it requires the state to send surplus revenues back to taxpayers. This forecast shows that over the next three years, Coloradans can expect to get $6.5 billion back from state surpluses thanks to TABOR. That's about $1,800 per taxpayer. But what's more is these massive surpluses can help Colorado continue to ratchet down its income tax rate. Now, if you come over here to the economic and revenue forecast for March of 2023, they do these every quarter, so the last one was in December, I like to come down to Table 8. Table 8 shows you revenue limit and retained revenue, so it shows you what impact TABOR is having on the state budget and, and state revenue situation. Specifically, if you come right down here, you can see we have the actual numbers for fiscal year 22, and it's showing that we get $3.8 billion in refunds. Next year, we can expect to get, actually this is the current fiscal year we're in now, fiscal year 23, we can expect to get 2.9 billion, and then you see 2 billion the next year, and 1.7 billion. And if you listen to state economists, what they'll explain is that because of all the money that was injected into the economy with COVID stimulus, we're seeing really high revenues uh, right, right now. We're seeing these big Tabor refunds coming in for fiscal year 22. And they're coming down a little bit from those, from those highs that we got from the stimulus, but state economists, unless there's some kind of economic catastrophe, state economists are expecting Tabor refunds to pretty much continue to rise from here. So they're gonna bottom out around 1.7 billion based on this estimate and then continue to rise. So we have Tabor surpluses and Tabor refunds as far as the eye can see. Now, I promised to explain a little bit about why it is that these surpluses mean we can lower our income tax rate even further in, in, in the state of Colorado. Now remember, in 2020, Independence Institute put an income tax cut on the ballot that citizens adopted. In 2022, we did the same thing. And despite those income tax cuts, we're continuing to see these massive surpluses at the state level and these big Tabor refunds. So here's what that looks like. This is a spreadsheet where I track for myself all of the economic forecasts, see March of 22, June, September, December, and 20, uh, March of 2023, that's where we are now. Now at this point, let's look right here. At this point, we have the actual numbers for fiscal year 22, and it's gonna be a $3.8 billion surplus. So that's great news. Now for fiscal year 23, that's the year we're in now, in the December forecast, we saw $2.6 billion. And then in the March forecast, it went up by 131 million. Again, we saw almost $500 million increase for the fiscal year 24 for next fiscal year's surplus. And then a $370 million increase in the estimate from the last forecast to this one for fiscal year 25. So what we can see is that with these massive Tabor surpluses, the state's in good shape and we can, can continue to ratchet down our income tax rate without having any impact at all on the state budget. Take a look at this interview that I did with Mandy Connell. She's a Denver radio host where I kind of lay out how Tabor works and how it is that we can use these surplus revenues to ratchet down our income tax rate. Tabor does a couple of things, two, two things primarily. Number one is it requires voter approval for new taxes. Most of us know that. Number two is it limits the amount of revenue the state can keep without asking voters. Whatever, comes, whatever revenue comes in above that limit in a particular year, we call the Tabor surplus or the surplus. So when you reduce the income tax rate during a surplus year, all it does is reduces the surplus. It doesn't actually cut into the state budget at all, unless you were to do a massive tax cut. So the, the cut we're proposing here, 4.25% from the current 4.4%, it would only reduce the amount of the surplus. It would not touch the state budget. So this economic forecast comes as great news because our surpluses have now grown, or at least what we estimate to be our surpluses has grown. And that means that we can ratchet down our income tax rate without having any fear 
of it impacting the state budget or state services. Take a look at these charts that I put together. These are the projected surpluses for fiscal year 23. If we did the income tax rate cut that I'm suggesting the Independence Institute is proposing to 4.25% from the current 4.4%, this is what that would look like. Now this is in green, the latest forecast. As you can see, forecasted sur surpluses have changed. This big drop that you see right here, now that, ha that happened because we cut the income tax rate. So we're getting a little less revenue than we would have other got otherwise gotten, therefore a little bit less of a surplus. But this gap right here, that money is just staying in Coloradans pockets to begin with because the income tax rate is lower. But from this lower income tax rate and this lower tax revenue, we've actually seen an increase a little bit from last forecast to this forecast. So the green is the current forecast, about $2.7 billion in Tabor surpluses. And this red line is where we'd have to drop below before taking the rate to 4.25% would have any impact at all on the state budget. If you, look at the next, if you look at the next fiscal year, we would have to drop down to this red line right here. So in the next fiscal year, we'd have to lose over $1.5 billion in Tabor revenue before it would have any impact on the state budget to cut the rate down to 4.25%. And as you can see, in fiscal year 24-25, the state continues to have massive surpluses of over $1.8 billion. And we'd have to have a significant reduction in Tabor revenues before we would have any impact on the state budget reducing the income tax rate to 4.25%. So as you can see, these big surpluses that we're getting allow us to lower the income tax rate without any impact on the state budget. It's up to politicians at this point to go ahead and act and bring the income tax rate down so that Coloradans can keep more money in their pocket with every paycheck instead of having to wait a year or more to get that money back in the form of a refund that the state knows already that it's going to have to refund anyways. So if you like the content here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon. That way you'll get not notified when I create more videos like this. But remember this, if knowledge is power, then ignorance is servitude. If you enjoy this content, also hit the like button to let YouTube know that you want to see more content like this so that I can bring you and other Coloradans more knowledge like this.